You're listening to Family Business with Daphne. We're a different kind. We are entrepreneurs, 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 and we are family business owners. We're going to talk about the E word. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. If this is your first time joining me, what is this show about? It is about encouraging and equipping you to do well in family business. Why? Why do I care about that? Why should you care? Why not just be a solopreneur? Why not work for a major corporation and earn lots of money? That's that's an option. Why am I so much about this option of family business? Well, I believe it is the solution going forward to building thriving communities. I have a dream that families who choose to who make that choice, can work together, can build a family business empire, however they define that to be, and then to go on to invest in their communities. And then you have these chains of multiple family businesses coming together and building up an amazing community. Is that is that really too far-fetched? I don't think so. I think that's how it was done. I think this that's how this country was built. And as a immigrant, as a refugee, someone from the outside, I can appreciate that. That that's the American dream that is sold all abroad. And perhaps I'm here to remind you of that. You can do that. You can achieve that dream. This is what you're about. Go for it. Don't let anyone tell you you cannot. So again, my name is Daphne Mallory. I blog on daphnemallory.blogspot.com, daphnemallory.blogspot.com. And I talk about everything from how to start your family business, the legalese of that, how to grow your family business using publicity. And then I also talk a lot about entrepreneurship education. How do you prepare your family as a whole, not just your children, but you yourself. How do you get the education and training that you need to develop your skills to make family business a success? You can also find me on Facebook, Daphne Mallory ESQ, and I'm under the category entrepreneur. I'm on LinkedIn, all of these different platforms. Let's connect. I want to get to know you. And today I want to talk about a post of mine that just blew up, (laughs) quite frankly, on social media. I came up with what I am calling the family business quadrant is if you can picture this for my math geeks out there. And I love math. Can I tell you, it's so strange, but my favorite subject, I had two uh, favorite subjects in school were algebra and physics. I've always been drawn to that sort of thinking. And I've come up with a quadrant. So imagine you have, you know, your X and your Y axis for those math people out there. And for the rest of us, think of a cross. And on the right side, top right side, um, you have the word family business owner. And top left, you have entrepreneur. Okay, top left, entrepreneur, pointing to the right, family business owner. Pointing to the lower right, you have investor, and pointing to the lower left, you have community development. That is the vision I have for you as a family business owner, that you would begin as an entrepreneur, you would then, with your family members, come together and form a family business As a family business, the fruits of your labor, the profits, you would then invest. And we can talk about that a little bit more, but I'm thinking primarily real estate investments, tangible things, but there are other options as well. And then pulling together many investments, you would go on to build thriving communities that would be both represented in terms of tangible assets, but also intangible assets, if you will, law and policies and charities and foundations and schools and on and on, changed lives. That's my vision for family business. And quite frankly, it's not original. (laughs) This is how it used to be. And this is how it ought to be, dare I say. So today, we're going to begin in the beginning. 
and that's with the left side of the quadrant, upper left, entrepreneur, the E word, the E word that has become filthy for some reason in many circles. Entrepreneurship used to be well thought of. It was a fun thing. It was a great thing. And if you're an entrepreneur and if you, when you hang with other entrepreneurs, it's amazing. There's energy. You love it. You, you're with your tribe. You're with your peeps. But unfortunately, Sometimes when you're outside of those circles, entrepreneurs seem to have gotten a bad rap. It's as if, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you're anti doing good in the world. You're anti uh, wanting to see change happen in a positive way. You're anti community building and you're just all about greed and profit. And that's uh, not even a myth. That's just a flat out lie. And so we have to begin re-establishing what it really means to be an entrepreneur, showing that it's not an evil thing, unless you make it evil and you can make anything evil. You can be in a job and be as evil as can be. And show that entrepreneurship is the starting point for building a thriving family business. So what is an entrepreneur? That's the other thing. I've noticed that people seem to interchange being an entrepreneur with Uh, career. It's night and day. Here's a definition from entrepreneur.com. A lot of you know already that I'm a columnist. I write a weekly column for Entrepreneur Magazine, and you can find my uh, column on entrepreneur.com, and I talk about family business. Here's a definition from entrepreneur.com. Entrepreneurs are focused on building and growing an enterprise whether it's a brand new business or transforming an existing company through innovation and making the most of opportunities hidden to others. Let me read that again. Entrepreneurs are focused on building and growing an enterprise, whether it's a brand new business or transforming an existing company through innovation and making the most of opportunities hidden to others. Now, I am living in Idaho, and there's a lot of, um, you know, fun around gold prospecting. Well, the entrepreneur is the ultimate prospector. We're the ones that are looking for those opportunities that people just don't see. They just don't get it. They're like, well, what are you going to do with that? How is that going to work? Oh, maybe that won't work because the economy is too much, or we're in a rural community, or, you know, on and on and on, excuses, excuses, excuses. The entrepreneur says, hmm, there's an opportunity here. Who is with me? Charge. And they're looking. And sometimes they're the only ones standing going, okay, I guess I'm going for it. That's you. You listening to this, you, you, you would have changed to something else by now if that wasn't you. I am talking to you. Hidden within you is an entrepreneurial giant waiting to come out. And when you do, and by the way, we are all waiting. (laughs) You have amazing opportunities to change your family tree and to change your community around you. But what was that F word? Entrepreneurs are focused. Focused. I mean, there's not, it's black and white. It's I am about strengthening and building and growing an enterprise. I am dedicated to this idea. And yes, I may fail. I may fail nine out of 10 times at first until I get that one business idea that takes off. But entrepreneurs are focused. Is that you? Have you lost your focus? Are you being distracted by monetary challenges, by things going on socially, perhaps even in your family, in the world, in your school situation, communities. Did you know that young people were entrepreneurs? Did you know that there are teen millionaires out there who have made millions (laughs) from launching and growing a business? So this is not just for the older folks, you young people that are listening And quite frankly, on the other end, because you are retired, do you think you can no longer be entrepreneurial and dedicated and focused? Of course you can. 
Absolutely. I have met 90 plus year old entrepreneurs who inspire me. It doesn't matter what the age, what matters is your passion, your dedication, and your drive towards achieving the vision that is inside of you. So if you're an entrepreneur, you have to dedicate your time, your energy, and your resources and daily activities. They all have to come into alignment in a determined focus to achieve what it is you're trying to achieve, to push this business forward. Because when you are an entrepreneur, you should be facing some sort of adversity. I don't think I've met one entrepreneur that said, oh yeah, that that business was easy. I just came up with it day one. By day 10, I made a million dollars. I just, look, that doesn't really happen. Now, I shouldn't say. I'm sure there are exceptions. I'm sure there's the instant fame that could probably propel someone into an amazing success. But for the rest of us, it really doesn't work that way. What happens is that you're taking steps daily, steps daily, steps daily, 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 plus that day of rest. Highly recommended. It works. But on those six days, you're taking those steps daily, steps daily, steps daily, until finally you achieve and grow the business it is you're seeking. Okay, so that's the definition of an entrepreneur. Did you hear evil in that? Is that really so bad? Is What is the evil in that? What, what that it, you result in making money for your family and blessing others with that because you have something to give away? No, I, I don't think so. So let me also go over a short list of activities that entrepreneurs do on a daily basis. What does this look like? Well, the first thing every entrepreneur who's truly an entrepreneur is doing or should be doing is hustling. Now, the professional term is called selling. In the real world of entrepreneurship, is called hustling. <laughs> okay. You are out there grinding. You are making calls. You are sending emails. You are having lunches and dinners and trying to pitch and sell your ideas, trying to gain influence so that the person in front of you, whether it's one person or an audience of hundreds of thousands, sells or uh, buys your idea, product, or service. And I should take a step back. You know, there are three things you can do with business, right? You can have your products for sale. You can sell services. But did you know that there are entrepreneurs who also are just in the business of selling ideas? It's abstract. It's, you know, ideas. And sometimes those ideas get codified in books and audio tapes and television shows and radio programs and da, 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 da. But just to be clear, yes, you can sell a product. Yes, you can sell your services. But then for some of you who are like, well, I'm not really an entrepreneur because I just have these ideas to change the world. So I should go and uh, be a part of a nonprofit. I want you to know there's that third options, uh, third option of selling ideas and that there are entrepreneurs who are successfully doing that as entrepreneurs in the marketplace. And that option is for you as well. So what is, so what does it look like? So what else do entrepreneurs do on a daily basis? Well, some of them do a lot of writing, especially for those of you who are in the business of selling ideas. But for those of you who are selling products and services, you're writing up one sheets, for, for sales presentations, perhaps you're writing proposals, perhaps you're writing as part of delivering client services, perhaps you're writing a blog and, and doing other shorter pieces on social media. That could be an option as well. Appearing on television and radio, that's definitely entrepreneurial, especially in today's day and age. You know, getting publicity is tough. You're in the marketplace where there are many celebrities, but then there are also reality celebrities and people who are just notoriously celebrities. So you're competing with a lot of people who also want access to television and radio and you have to compete with them as well. But it's an entrepreneur's quote unquote job to make those appearances to grow his or her own businesses. Not every entrepreneur has to access the media 
but many do. And as a family business owner, I always suggest that that be part of your marketing mix. Entrepreneurs are into negotiating. I love negotiating. There are like three things I love to do as an entrepreneur. And one of them would be negotiating and, and slash uh, deal making. I, I love making deals, creating deals, and negotiations. And I think a lot of that stems from not just my legal background, but it just, you know, just perks up the entrepreneurial spirit in me when I can sit across from someone and say, hey, what do you want? This is what I want. How, how do we make this happen? And go through that process. I enjoy it. And that's one of the skills that entrepreneurs need to have and, and one of the activities that they do on a daily basis. What else? They're buying. They're investing. Buying and investing. Supplies, buildings, on and on and on. Buying and investing. Other businesses, you don't don't have to start a business from scratch. Perhaps you do have the means to buy an existing business and, and steer it in a different direction or grow it further. Team building and leading, creating teams. You know, as a family business owner, you must excel at team building. <laughs> your initial team will be your family but then that will ultimately grow to non-family members as well. So you must excel at team building. Because as I always say, capital is not the downfall of family businesses, capital or lack thereof. It's communication, the dynamics. It's, you know, hating your spouse, not getting along with your sibling, your cousin, your grandparents. It's those those are the dynamics that destroy family businesses. So if you can excel and become really proficient at building teams, you will do well. That is key. And it's certainly key to entrepreneurs and, and being an entrepreneur who wants to, to grow businesses and, and, you know, get engaged in different startups, et cetera, and, and manage projects, managing people, leading people, managing projects, growing others, having conversations. I'm I'm trying to paint a picture for you. What do entrepreneurs do? Attending or hosting events, organizing people, submitting proposals, serving people, serving your clients, answering the phones. Do people, you know, use phones in businesses anymore? (laughs) Or is it all on Facebook? You know, it took me a while. I finally figured out, Oh, people were leaving me messages on Facebook and, and I keep responding, please send me an email or call me. Um, but yeah, people still do the phone thing, believe it or not. And I'm one of them. Creating or improving products, innovating, planning strategically, creating budgets and cash flow statements. This is what it looks like to be an entrepreneur. So think about this list, a short list. There are many, many other options, but are you focused on activities like these on a daily basis? Does this sound like you or have you become distracted by obligations, including a job? Many entrepreneurs start their journey holding down a quote unquote nine to five. What kept them on track track is that they continued with these activities on a day-to-day basis because it was a reminder to them that their current situation with was temporary or it assisted them in their dream in of building a business but they weren't distracted by those things and it's not just a job it could be being a stay-at-home mom you know i transitioned out of a legal career to go home and be a stay-at-home mom for years but Towards the uh, latter half of that time, I started focusing, in addition to those responsibilities, focusing on entrepreneurial activities on a day-to-day basis, reminding me of who I was, an entrepreneur. And in the process, I was building up those skills so that one day when it was right, I could dive fully into this alongside my children to build a family business. So what I'm saying to you is that who you are is an entrepreneur. And I know that's who you are because you're still listening. (laughs) And so I'm saying 
do activities that comply, that complement, that go with who you are. Pick three, four, five things that I've mentioned, and you can listen to this on my blog again. Write it down and take note of the three, four, five activities that will remind you of who you are and that will help to grow a business on the side or fully. And you need to be doing this on a daily basis, except for that one day of rest, which I highly recommend. Although, again, that's not an original idea from me. So that's the entrepreneur quadrant. That's, those are the activities. That's what it looks like in terms of what it means to be an entrepreneur. I have been quoted in various publications online. I get to talk about being an entrepreneur or leadership development or community development. And I've, I always find it interesting that people want to know why I'm so intrigued with entrepreneurship and, and what it means to families and, 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 you know, what does it look like, sort of what I've just talked about with you. But I thought it would be fun to see, you know, how others were looking at this thing called entrepreneurship. How, how are other people viewing uh, entrepreneurship and, and what does it mean to them? And so I picked a couple of things, uh, some food for thought for you. Richard Branson, who is the founder of Virgin Group, says, you don't learn to walk by following rules. You learn by doing and falling over. And that was his two cents on entrepreneurship. And I think a lot of you, you know, you know you're an entrepreneur. What you're afraid of is failure. You are afraid of what it would mean to take another hit economically or emotionally or spiritually if you would dare to try something new. I, I get that. I understand. Uh, let me just say, I have failed in business. This is not, you know, I have always, always been entrepreneurial and I always recognized it. And I'm one of those people that I just poop dive in. I'm like, let's go. And everyone's going, uh, wait, wait, Daphne, wait, wait. And I'm like, no, come on. Rah! Okay. And I've done that a couple of times in my life <laughs> and fell flat on my face. But the good news, the great news is I learned so much from those experiences. I learned what not to do. <laughs> I learned not to pull back, but rather to just keep pushing further. But this time, maybe, you know, go in with more skills and a better mindset and and understand how to deal with people and to gather them around you as you're trying something new. So I don't want you to let past failure, whether it's past business failure, past marital failures, past life failures, job, career failures, to stop you from trying family business. It's a lie that, oh, you will fail again. Therefore, you must not try. That is a lie. Now, you, your family, yes, you may start a new family business venture and you may initially fail. Can we get that out of the way? Okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, what's the reward? The reward is you may pick up and try again. And the success that awaits you it's not just within your generation, but it's for generations to come. Is that not worth it? Of course it is. Of course it is. Now, Scott Belsky says, it's not about ideas. It's about making ideas happen. That's what an entrepreneur does. We are about making ideas happen happen. Entrepreneurs are not just talkers, <laughs> although many of us are uh, huge talkers. What makes us entrepreneurial is that we are about seeing those ideas come to fruition. And so I am asking you, those ideas that you dream about at night or doing breaks at the job or perhaps as you should not be while you're doing your job, <laughs> Just keep a notebook and just, you know, write it out and let it be and get get back to work. Make those ideas happen. And 
Sure. What What's lacking is the ability. I know what you're saying. I know you're thinking, yeah, I've got great ideas. You know, I saw this commercial and I thought that, but I don't know what to do next. Okay. So the entrepreneur then says, well, how can I go learn more? Who needs to train me? Who needs to consult me? What book do I need to read? What YouTube video do I need to explore further? Whatever. That's the entrepreneur. That's the entrepreneur laying there inside of you that needs to be awakened. Some other quotes from entrepreneurs, and and think about as I'm talking about this, think about the model entrepreneurs in your world, in, in your life. Perhaps there are people in your own family that you admire and look up to, and you're thinking, wow, yeah, grandpa was an entrepreneur. He came here and settled this land and, you know, raised cattle and left behind, you know, a ranch for us and, and two, three, four, five generations after. So you probably have models or a model somewhere already in your family. Now think about this. Everything started as nothing. That's one quote. Now I'm going to modify that to everything, meaning these businesses that you are seeing. So, I mean, someone in your community thought to do X or Y store, restaurant, financial services, gym, health care service, hospital, someone in your community, or perhaps even outside of your community, saw a need brought in a business or started a business there from the ground up. So something started, everything started from nothing. Someone had the idea that someone who for some reason we have deemed evil in our society was an entrepreneur. Say it with me now, entrepreneur. That entrepreneur said, you know, I bet if we did X, or I bet if we started X, this community could be improved. We could deliver the needs that are missing here. And yes, as a reward for that, they earned a <gasps> profit. A profit. Yes, they, they, they made a profit, folks. And from that profit and those proceeds, they might have bought real estate they probably bought real estate for their families and for other families, and maybe they rented it and, you know, leased office space. I mean, really? Is that so terrible? Is that so terrible? No. So part of my work, <laughs> apparently, with this show, with my writing, and with my speaking, is to just destroy, I mean, I want to annihilate any notion that entrepreneurship in itself is bad. I am saying to you that entrepreneurship is a powerful way and the entrepreneur is the seed that gets family business started and it's that seed within you. Um, we're going to take a break. I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to let that sit a little bit. You're listening to Family business with Daphne. And when I come back, we shall continue on the first quadrant, the family business quadrant, the entrepreneur. Let's explore that further. Let's really hit that home. And again, you can check me out on my blog, daphnemallory.blogspot.com. See you on the other side of this break. Ranger Station. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting in the forest. Uh -huh. One second I'm having a smoke. Next thing I know, I'm face-to-face -face with Smokey Bear. Wow. And he told me it only takes one spark to start a wildfire. Did you know nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans? I had no idea. That's why Smokey's famous and you're not. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Well... I finally did it. I opened a 401k. What? Why? Just wait for the inheritance. We've definitely got a rich uncle somewhere. We're one call away from the winner's circle at the Derby, dinners with multiple forks, a vacation home in the country, using summer as a verb. You don't actually think that, do you? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. 
You wanted to be a teacher when you were little, but as you grew up, things changed. Teaching just didn't seem like the best option anymore, so you decided to become something else. But what would your 12-year-old self say? Interesting and innovative things are happening in teaching today, so it's time to put it back on your list. Don't try to convince yourself otherwise. You had it right the first time. Find out how you can make more at teach.org. Make more. Teach. Brought to you by Teach and the Ad Council. Hey, there's my son. Hey, Dad. Um, what's wrong with your voice? There is nothing wrong with my voice. Well, it's just sort of... Hello, Dad. Susan? Guys, I think it's about time to get in the car and maybe see some green things. What are these green things you speak of? This weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. You're back and you're listening with Two Family Business with Daphne. An entrepreneur. That's me. That's who I am. I claim it. I name it. I love it. I enjoy it. I embrace my identity as an entrepreneur. I'm not ashamed of it. I believe it's an amazing way to prosper my family as well as to prosper my community. And I'm so sad that I even have to do a show about this, quite frankly. That's amazing that that I'm sitting here to you. And I'm talking to you about entrepreneurship. That's just fascinating to me. And, well, excuse the background noise. It seems like I, I seem to went ahead and, and had some opposition from my computer when I said that. But I still stand by that, that I am an entrepreneur, diehard fan, and I love it. You can learn more about me on Facebook, you can go to Daphne Mallory ESQ and you can learn more about my rants and ramblings and hopefully some key strategies and techniques for being an entrepreneur as well there. I'm on LinkedIn and I do lots of writing all over the place, including Idaho Family Magazine, uh, Times News, Magic Valley, Entrepreneur. And I'm a new, did I inform you all that I'm a new blogger as well for the Huffington Post? So anyone who will let me talk <laughs> through writing, it's I, I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity and I definitely take any opportunity I can to take care of that and, and do that as well. So, the entrepreneur, the non-evil entrepreneur, I want to address a couple of people groups right now. I think it's important to think about this in terms of different people groups. Now, first of all, as a woman, I have said in a speech that I've done in uh, different arenas that entrepreneurship and family business is the next women's movement. It absolutely is. Think about this. Entrepreneurship is about birthing a dream, making a dream turn into reality. And women know how to do that. (laughs) We are just naturally inclined to birth into the world things. And I'm not just talking, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking about dreams and visions. That's, That's who we are. And entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship is extremely empowering to women. And I'm talking about women all around the world. As you may or may not know, I'm originally from Liberia. I was just interviewed uh, by the, on, the, it's called the Immigrant Entrepreneur Podcast. And we had an amazing conversation about this and and about immigration and refugees and entrepreneurship, which I'm, I'm going to get to that in a second. But I was thinking, because of the two civil wars that we've had in my country, guess, guess who was left behind to rebuild that nation? It wasn't the men. It was the women. 
And how would they rebuild and how do they continue to rebuild a nation that's torn apart, not just by war, but as you can imagine, most recently the Ebola outbreak and just just many other things. How do you rebuild after those things? The typical pathway in and throughout West Africa is to rely on foreign aid. That is one option. The option I'm about, the option I propose is to rebuild through entrepreneurs, that they would be the one to provide the solutions in that country, in my country, in other poor countries, in everywhere, rural communities here in America, cities, that we as women could carry and hold on to a vision of improving lives in our communities and using entrepreneurship to do that. So I think women, my sisters out there around the world listening, we have an opportunity to become entrepreneurs who can in turn improve our families and our communities. And the minute, and I mean the minute women catch on to that vision, it is over. It is on. So if you're listening out there and here's, okay, so here's one objection. I know you're thinking about this, but, you know, first and foremost, my family comes first. And I certainly don't want to do anything that wrecks my family life. I won't you know, the demands of entrepreneurship is just too much if I want to make sure that I'm putting my family first. That is a legitimate uh, thing. I'm not going to say objection. That's a legitimate concern for you to have. And I understand that. And so, like me, you may need to wake up at 2.30 or 3 a.m. in the morning so that you can balance it all out. You don't have to do that. But I'm saying if if you really do believe in this vision, you will come up with creative solutions such as, hmm, I need to wake up two, three hours earlier so that I have quiet time and some time to get some concentrated work done before my kids wake up. Or I'm going to have to squeeze this in, you know, and understand that, okay, I'm not going to be that entrepreneur that can work 10 hours per day. I need to be that entrepreneur that could do two-hour spurts you know, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, and perhaps I need to give up X, Y, Z so that I could maybe have a mother's helper and I'm still in the home with my children, but that mother helper is playing with them for an hour or two so I can, you know, get something done online. You can get creative. You're, you're a woman. You got this. You got this. What you need to do is understand the potential and the vision of being an entrepreneur, and you will find the creative solutions to do that. So yes, entrepreneurship, and, and I've dedicated speeches to this, entrepreneurship and family business is absolutely hands down the next women's movement. You heard it here, Daphne Mallory. <laughs> the next people group that I want to talk to would be my fellow immigrants and refugees. What? We're, what, what, what? Refugees and immigrants and entrepreneurship? There's no way. How can I, we, you know, come here? Oftentimes we have nothing. We don't know anyone. We don't know the system. We don't know the culture. And we may not even know the language. And now you're what? You're talking about entrepreneurship for us? <gasps> yes, of course. Of course. Absolutely. Hands down. Now, you do have some obstacles in front of you, one of which may, may be a language barrier. But I know so many immigrants and refugees that come from another country who were highly, highly successful in their own rights there. They've got the skills. They had crafts that they did and implemented in, in other countries. The only difference is they're in a new situation, in a new culture, and perhaps because of that, because they were either thrust into it or, or came, and whatever the circumstances are, they're starting from zero. But guess what, my fellow immigrants and refugees? That's the same objection I get from 
uh, Americans who are born here, they say the same thing. I have no money. I'm starting with zero. You know, I lost my retirement or, you know, we spent all of this money on, on medical expenses and we have nothing less. Uh, that that story of I'm starting with nothing really has no ethnic background or anything. It's it's called life. It's called circumstances and it's called how to overcome adversity. So I'm talking to you. I want you to know that working for someone else is not your only option. And that option of entrepreneurship is not off the table because you are an immigrant or refugee. In fact, because you are an immigrant or refugees, you are in a unique position. You are entrepreneurial in your mindset and you don't even know it. You've already overcome so much adversity and and had to overcome obstacles and are fighting that on a daily basis and being thrust into a new culture and having to deal with that and having to provide for your family and on and on and on. Everything that makes up that rough and rugged entrepreneur that you hear about in this country That's you too. And all it means now is that you have to get dedicated and creative about figuring out how this is going to get done. Read my blog for more information and step by step and how does this work. Get books, get trained, get classes, develop your skills, learn the language. Everything that you will need to excel here. And or there, perhaps your entrepreneur journey starts here and your family business launches there. I have no idea, but don't dare think that this option is not for you because my friend, it is. So those are the two people groups that that have really been on my heart. But then of course, there's my third one and those are my senior adult peeps. I write a senior a living column for Times News Magic Valley here in Idaho. And I talk about senior living issues. And most most of my friends are, I would say, average age 60 and up. I love seniors. I love hanging with seniors. They're not insecure. They're so very secure about who they are. They will tell it to you like it is, <laughs> whether you want to hear it or not. <laughs> You know, they they don't feel a need to compete with me, and and I just I just love them. I love hanging out with them, and it saddens me that they think that um, entrepreneurship is not for them. That they should have could have made that choice a lot earlier in life, and because it's later in life now, it's over. I no 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 no, especially especially when it comes to family business. Wouldn't it be amazing? to launch an enterprise for the sole purpose, especially if you're retired, for the sole purpose of transferring the entrepreneurial mindset and skills to your children and grandchildren and for the sole purpose of ensuring that you left an enterprise behind that you knew would build them up and further generations to come and the community around them. Oh, my goodness. What an amazing opportunity older adults have. You know how to navigate the system. You know how to navigate the culture. You, you understand you've been through life experiences. You, you know why certain things have not worked where you are and, and what should have worked and, and how things could be different. All of that wisdom is precious. Wisdom that consultants can't teach because we just don't know. We don't know that history. You do. You carry it. You've walked it. And so if you are an older adult listening to this, look, you have an opportunity to mentor and change a generation to come beginning within your own family. And we need it. There's only so much you can do with information and books and from YouTube. At some point, you need real information that only you have. And so I encourage you. And I understand entrepreneurship takes energy. Yes, 
But a lot of you are very energetic in other ways. <laughs> we just need you to transfer that energy in, over here into entrepreneurship. And you can absolutely do that. And I'm encouraging you to do that. You might be the one that's needed to lead. And that young adult may be too afraid, uh, too distracted, too non-long-term thinking to think about it. But you understand what legacy is, don't you? You're working on building legacy. You get it. You've lived life. So transfer that to your children and to your grandchildren. So those are the people groups that have really, really been on my heart except for one more. <laughs> I've got one more people group that I must address in terms of this topic of entrepreneurship, what it means to be an entrepreneur, why you should be one, and that that's the seed of family business. You start with the individual, that entrepreneur. And those would be my young people. My young people, preteens and teens. Business is for you. If I had to do it all over again, I would have started a business in high school without a doubt, hands down. Think about it. You've got access to teachers, advisors, and I'm talking to homeschool families as well. So within the, either if you're attending school, public or private, or if you are a homeschooling family, in the community, you have access to these adults who will talk to you because you are young. And that's a blessing. You've got teachers. You've got community leaders. You've got other business leaders. You've got programs that exist to teach leadership skills. And these are extracurricular programs, perhaps clubs, or they are programs that exist at the school itself, at your local school, and as well as on a state, regional, or national level, you've got these youth things that you can be a part of that could really help to shape you as an entrepreneur. There are teen millionaires. I mean, there, there are millionaires who have first-generation students who have graduated from high school turned millionaires or those who didn't even complete high school yet, but they've developed a technology, innovated something, and they have become millionaires because they pursued their entrepreneurial dream. Why can't that be you? You, yes, you 13-year-old, 14-year-old, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19-year-old listening. I am talking to you. You've got the energy. You've got the research skills and capabilities. Or if you don't, get on it. Figure out how to do research. Uh, understand how to uh, read information quickly, how to acquire it, and then how to apply it to business building, leadership development, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't want you to, you, young person listening, to be dismissive of this idea of family business for something down the road, something not for me because I'm not old enough yet. No, no. If anything, you, little one, young person listening, should be the most energized about becoming an entrepreneur. And I get it. I know that in different uh, institutions, and I'll just leave it at that word, institutions, you're probably not being steered toward entrepreneurship. You're probably being told, hey, when you graduate, you know, position yourself to go to college and, and get your nine to five job. I understand. Now, as an entrepreneur, I'm happy that I went to the schools I went to. I went to pretty good schools. I went to Brown University and I went to UNC Chapel Hill School of Law. Good schools, great networks, great education, you know, excellent. It continues to this day to open doors for me. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't pursue that option if you choose. And I shouldn't, and I'm not saying that for those of you who decide not to pursue that option, that it's bad. No, not what I am saying as a young person who's constantly being told that your option is graduate, get a job, graduate, get a job, graduate, get a job. I'm telling you that's a myth and there are other options. And the biggest option out there, young person, is that you can build your own business. You can be your own boss. There are steps to take. 
this uh, there are, there's a path to follow. There are skills you need to develop. It needs to be done right. But that is a viable option. And there are teens who have been extremely, extremely successful doing this, especially first-generation students. So again, if you're sitting out there and your parents came to this country and you know, you're the first one really going to, to school, high school, first one in your family, going to college here, entrepreneurship is for you. If you're fifth, sixth generation in your family going to college, your parents went to college, grandparents, entrepreneurship is for you. It's for both of you. So, you know, get this idea out of your mind that it's an evil thing to build a business. It's an evil thing to make a profit. You can you can be evil in a nine to five nonprofit job. It has nothing to do with the type of job. It has to do with the person seated there. <laughs> and if you are an entrepreneur who is dedicated to improving the lives of others, starting in your with yourself and starting with your family and then expanding outward into the world, become an entrepreneur. Let's, let's, I'm trying to nudge this giant. I'm hoping by the end of this, after you have heard this, you're like, yes, yes. That's me. And you're probably like, okay, what next? <laughs> and so hopefully if this got, you know, got your juices flowing and you're ready and you're doing jumping jacks and you're like, let's go. I'm an entrepreneur. So now what? So now what you're going to do as an entrepreneur is develop those skills on a daily basis. You're going to read about it. You're going to learn more about it. You're going to train and you're going to identify activities that you do on a daily basis to grow your idea. You've got an idea. I have not met one person. Now, people have said, yeah, well, I don't, I just don't know what to do. I have so many ideas or, oh, I don't have any idea. No, 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 no. Entrepreneurs have ideas. The problem is figuring out, oh, I am an entrepreneur and I should go for it and I can be successful. Once you really decide that you can be successful, it's, it's over. You've got the ideas in you. We just need to bring that out. So what do you do on a daily basis then? For me, and you can find this list on my blog, there are five things I do on a daily basis that remind me I'm an entrepreneur that keep me on track and that help me to grow my business and to grow my skills. So first, I make sure that I contact the media. I get into the media. For me, the media is television, radio, national publications such as magazines, newspaper, anywhere where I can get a voice and say my thing. And my thing is family business and entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship education. But then I'm also covered for other things because people are very curious about what I'm up to and for whatever reason. So sometimes I talk about my personal life. Sometimes I, I talk about my journey as a mother, as a a community member, as a board member, you know, whatever it is, whatever, in whatever way I can share my life, I'm very open to it. And I do often. So I do that. Then I also sell. The next time we talk, I'm going to be interviewing a, a family business owner. And we're going to deal with this topic of selling, you know, that other evil word, selling. And so I sell. Every day I'm selling something. I'm selling an idea, I'm selling my service, my speaking engagement, I'm selling someone and having me in to do training, I am I'm selling my you know, opportunity to land a column or something or to get on a TV show or to get on a radio show, I am selling, selling a, con a consulting package, I am selling. That's what I do as an entrepreneur. And then on a daily basis... I am looking for opportunities to train because I am 
as an expert and as a mentor around this topic of family business, it's important to me that I not just inspire you and trigger you to go forward and, you know, rawr with excitement, but okay, you need skills now. And so I'm booking. So you can look at me as a, a booking person. I'm, I'm booking my own speaking engagements, training engagements. I'm booking guests for this show for interviews that I'm doing, at, you know, through my written outlets. And so I do a lot of booking, booking guests. Booking myself, book, 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 book. And so those are three of the five activities that I'm doing on a daily basis. And to learn more, you just go to my blog, daphnemallory.blogspot.com, and you can see the other things I'm up to. I share my to-do list, hopefully to inspire you and for you to generate your own ideas. And don't forget, by the way, you can also like my page on Facebook, Daphne Mallory E. SQ. Apparently there's some other Daphne Mallory's. You want the one that says Daphne Mallory ESQ. And you can find more pictures of me and my my little ones and, and learn more about this issue of family business. And join me back here next week. KDKI 103.9 FM. 